Until now, you could only spend, sell, or hold your BTC. Meanwhile, the DeFi space was charging ahead at incredible speed. Lending, staking, decentralized exchanges, and smart contracts are taking the financial world by storm. But there is so much unharnessed potential within Bitcoin. After all, Bitcoin is the prime mover of the whole ecosystem, the most liquid and most trusted store of value. There is no reason why smart contracts shouldn't be able to use Bitcoin as a native currency and instantly transfer value over the Lightning Network. This is why Mint Layer has developed the last missing piece of the puzzle. Mint Layer is a future-proof solution for scaling and accelerating DeFi, and it's built on Bitcoin. Adding smart contracts to Bitcoin has the ability to trigger explosive growth of an ecosystem that has not reached its deserved potential. Mintlayer recognizes that progress is not about increasing block size or faster transactions. True progress is a complete disruption of the very fabric of finance. The world is at the verge of hyper-Bitcoinization. Mintlayer is the key to unlocking Bitcoin to instant stablecoin transactions, fully compliant stock token issuance, atomic swaps, confidential transactions, and more. You don't even need large server farms and resources to run a mint layer node, just your personal computer. Mint layer, opening Bitcoin to DeFi for everyone. Welcome to the stage, Andreas Kohl. Mint Layer, he's the director of institutional relations at Mint Layer. Mint Layer is a Bitcoin sidechain bridging BTC and DeFi being developed in the Republic of San Marino. In some circles, Andreas is known as Mr. Lichtenstein because he has been a dedicated evangelist for the principality, initially mainly promoting its unique constitutional freedoms right of secession at the most municipal level within libertarian circles. In early 2015, he was awarded a prize by Liechtenstein's ruling prince for an essay he wrote about decentralization, a third of which was dedicated to monetary decentralization and blockchain technology. He took advantage of the opportunity to give the prince his first Bitcoin and get introduced to the head reg regulators of the country and give them their first crash course on crypto. Welcome, Andreas. Thank you so much for having me, Lavinia. Right, so um, as uh, as Lavinia said, I am Andreas Cole. I'm in charge of uh, business development for Midlayer. Um, as uh, as you learned in the video, um, Midlayer is a Bitcoin sidechain or layer two, which essentially are ways of saying that uh, it's an upgrade or an add-on to Bitcoin, which uh, doesn't require changing Bitcoin itself. So on this new layer, you'll be able to issue any type of token, build decentralized finance applications, uh, mint NFTs, and do anything else that's currently associated with uh, other protocol level technologies, whilst fully inheriting the security of Bitcoin's proof of work. So Midler is built on Substrate by a team of experienced Rust and blockchain developers uh, led by Enrico Rubali, who was uh, previously a senior engineer at Bitfinex and a lead developer of uh, the original USDT smart contracts on Omni and Ethereum. Um, as you might know, Omni, which was back then known as Semester Coin, uh, was an earlier tokenization solution on top of Bitcoin, uh, which Tether eventually moved out of due to scalability issues uh, related to its uh, relying and competing for on-chain space with Bitcoin. Uh, that's why most modern takes on, on this problem now call for sidechains like, like Mintlayer. But why, why build on, on Bitcoin in the first place? Um, to answer that question, I, I, I think the, the most succinct way is to refer to Metcalfe's law, which uh, if you don't know, it's a law that states that the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of connected uh, users on the system. Um, I believe that when taking Metcalfe's law in, in consideration um, and in the context of the technical properties of uh, proof of work, combined with the economic and social nature of uh, open source distributed peer-to-peer -peer technology, uh, it is a rather, rather reasonable conclusion to state that Bitcoin can never be dethroned uh, and that it is, it is impossible to create a more secure network. Rather, I believe personally that Bitcoin will inevitably keep evolving to remain the most popular decentralized settlement network in the world. Um, so that's why I'm here to propose Mintler as the next step in this evolution. 
an upgrade which will allow Bitcoin to catch up with the utility of other uh, blockchain networks. We accomplished this by creating a new blockchain, which is itself quite close to Bitcoin in its design philosophy. That is to say, we use UTXOs rather than an account-based system like Ethereum. We have um, a limited block size. We implement transaction batching and signature aggregation technologies inspired by Taproot. And our default smart contract language is Bitcoin Script. Uh, although there will also be support for WebAssembly smart contracts uh, as used in Polkadot. When it comes to the consensus mechanism, Mintlayer employs a brand new mechanism called Dynamic Slot Allotment, or DSA for short, which is similar to proof of stake, but uses Bitcoin hashes as a source of randomization to select block signers, keeps track of time using Bitcoin blocks, and most importantly, allows anyone to create or enforce a checkpoint on the Bitcoin main chain, which protects Mintlayer uh, from the types of exploits the traditional proof of stake chains are vulnerable to, such as long range attacks. Uh, checkpoints also drastically decrease the storage space necessary to run a Mintlayer node, such that uh, anyone will be able to run a node on their own personal device. Uh, this design also affords Mintlayer better privacy compared to other existing solutions. It lets us uh, enjoy all of the security of Bitcoin's proof of work, uh, as well as the most inter interoperability with Bitcoin itself compared to other alternatives. Specifically, you'll be able to use Mintlayer tokens on the Lightning Network, as well as perform truly trustless atomic swaps between the two chains. Uh, this last point is possible because each Mintlayer block is tied to a Bitcoin block, meaning that if there is a reorganization of the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, the Mintlayer blockchain automatically gets reorganized as well. Uh, in comparison with other existing alternatives when it comes to bridging Bitcoin and DeFi, uh, most either do not rely on Bitcoin at all, such as is the case with uh, wrapped smart contracts on, on Ethereum or other chains, uh, or they have to make a sacrifice on either scalability, decentralization, security, or interoperability. Uh, merge mining has emerged recently as a popular solution by some Bitcoin sidechain developers. But briefly put, since I don't have too much time to dive into it, is a system which hands power to the controls of mining pools, uh, whether or not they have a stake in the sidechain, which may create some less than desirable economic incentives. And that's why we didn't go with merge mining. So Mintlayer introduces um, three uh, tokenization standards uh, for builders, developers, and innovators. As it approaches complete mainstream adoption, Bitcoin faces a challenge. It is a labyrinth to issue stock tokens, stable coins, securities, and assets on the blockchain. Institutions and DeFi projects are constantly striving to comply with regulations and congestion, while users are growing concerned about their privacy. How can this be solved? Mintlayer turns Bitcoin into a protocol that can handle any imaginable financial use case without compromising compliance. There are three different Mintlayer tokenization standards. MLS01 enables optional access control list features. Transactions can be limited according to a set of rules determined by the token issuer or a designated third party. Like a service that knows the identity of traders without leaking that information to anyone else. It is the new tokenization standard to digitize stocks, stablecoins, and more, providing a much needed expansion to Bitcoin's versatility. The MLS02 token standard has native support for confidential transactions. It provides access to groundbreaking levels of privacy and allows to issue pegged confidential versions of other cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin and Ether. And last but not least, MLS03 is the new standard for the popular non-fungible tokens known as NFTs. To learn more about the future of finance, visit mintlayer.org. So um, as, as you've seen from the videos, there's uh, three tokenization standards. Um, MLS01 uh, optionally has access control lists, uh, which uh, can serve to move the burden of compliance from exchanges to token issuers uh, and create a fully compliant uh, decentralized exchanges for security tokens. MLS02 um, has uh, slightly heavier transactions with higher transaction fees, but they are fully confidential like Monero. And then there's MLS03 for, for NFTs. Um, but for me, nothing is more exciting than the idea of not having a native gas token. So uh, something that's fairly unique for with Mintler is that you can use any MLS01 or MLS02 token to pay for gas. Um, and uh, and this will depend on uh, uh, block validators and uh, which uh, tokens they've uh, chosen to signal 
um, as uh, tokens that they they are willing to push into the mempool and, and accept as uh, as block rewards. Uh, um, so um, so nobody has ever implemented this free market of gas tokens model before. Uh, I think that uh, combined with um, um, atomic swaps, it uh, it can create a, a much easier uh, end user experience. Um, just briefly, there, there is also a, a native token, mint layer tokens, which are used to uh, stake in order to have, get a chance to become a block signer, um, as well as um, they, they must be burned in order to issue an ML01, ML02, or ML03, or to update ACL uh, rules. Um, they There will also uh, be uh, the option to use these tokens to vote for uh, projects, which... Uh, uh, should be supported with grants from a special decentralized, uh, a special decentralized MLT treasury. Um, just to, quickly, the latest news on Mintler: uh, we raised uh, 5.2 million dollars in a seed round uh, last March. Um, we are currently on track to release our test net uh, in in autumn this year, um, and our main net should uh, should uh, uh, come out in the first quarter of 2022. Um, we are planning to uh, hold a fair sale and a public sale. And, uh, the, the fair sale will coincide with the launch of the testnet, and uh, the public sale is, um, is still uh, due to, to, to be announced. Uh, we are tightly regulated under the rep- uh, authorities of the Republic of San Marino and their blockchain uh, legal framework. Um, we we have a number of, um, of 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 advisors, including Alphabet and Launchpool, which are specifically advising us on our public sales. Uh, and we've also reached out to the sovereign community to get uh, feedback on a proposed public sale on their Origins platform. Um, we we really like the the sovereign community, and um, we hold steadfast in our goal of combining forces with them in order to build the ideal infrastructure to support projects like Sovereign in the future. Uh, we think that this is the ideal marriage. And uh, I know many of you listening today may actually come from the sovereign community. You might uh, wonder if Mintler's goal is to steal sovereign away from RSK. Uh, I would like to clarify that there is no such intention. I actually am really looking forward to listening to Yago and Diego speak later today. Um, as mentioned earlier, we have a fairly different approach from RSK. We didn't go with merge mining and we do not offer EVM or Solidity compatibility. So I think there is ample space for both uh, protocols to support sovereign. And I believe that uh, uh, individual and financial sovereignty comes from maximizing human agency um, and individual freedom, which means more options inevitably lead to an increase, not a decrease of sovereignty. That's why I hope that to convince the sovereign community to eventually uh, offer a version of their platform on Mintler alongside the version on RSK. We are also happy to be supporting a number of other projects, such as uh, StableComp, which are building on Mintler. And we'd like to to invite uh, all of you, um, uh, if you have a project which you would like to build on Bitcoin, to send your pitch decks to me at uh, address at mintler.org, the address you can see on screen, uh, and to engage with us uh, on social media. We, here you have our Telegram, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, and we also have a Discord for uh, community calls. That's that's it for today. Uh, I'm sorry it was so short, uh, but uh, I think this is a good condensed introduction to Mintler. And uh, th- thank you for listening. Okay, so Digital Nomad uh, asks, um, uh, how does Mintler address the issue of privacy? Um, so first of all, we're, as I mentioned, we're based on UTXO uh, rather than account-based system. Um, so th- that in of itself uh, is uh, it offers greater privacy. Uh, on Ethereum, uh, when you, whenever you spend ETH anywhere, you can, um, you're basically revealing your whole entire portfolio, everything you've uh, you've um, ever invested in. Whereas uh, with, with a UTXO system, uh, it's not immediately so obvious. And also you can combine that with signature aggregation, transaction batching to gain even more privacy. And ultimately you can gain maximum privacy by by using MLS02 tokens, which uh, uh, are completely confidential like Monero. Thank you so much, Andreas. No problem. Thank you for having me.